joins us now from London. Veronica, good to have you on the show. Uh, polls do suggest that uh, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. may see a, a, a landslide victory in these elections. I mean, a, a, at a very basic level, this would mean the revival of a, of a political clan that was ousted by, uh, by a revolt almost four decades ago. What do you think this means for the country? It really is not an overstatement to say that this is a moment of incredible importance for the country. Um, imagine that um, the Marcos regime was kicked out unceremoniously in 1986. Much was made about the Philippine people and their power to peacefully, non-violently kick out an autocratic regime, a regime that had imposed martial law uh, across the country. There were tens of thousands of people who presented their cases and whose cases were proven of torture, of, of forced disappearance, of forced migration. These were some of the worst human rights abuses that were seen in the 70s and 80s around the world, from anywhere around the world. And here we have his son, who has refused to apologize, who benefited massively, not just from staying in power as a result of the human rights abuses, but also benefited materially. He was, he lived in, you know, massive wealth. It is known for a fact that $13 billion, $13 billion from the Philippine government was stolen by the Marcos regime. And he seems to be um, performing a cakewalk to win the presidency now that we're in 2022. And if he wins, it means the triumph of historical revisionism. Veronica, so, I mean, this, 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 this yeah. transformation, like you say, is uh, remarkable. I mean, you do. I mean, uh, he was kicked out unceremoniously. Uh, we, I mean, it is reported that the Marcos has sort of plundered billions of dollars from from the from the state. And and like you said, you know, uh, thousands of his opponents were, were 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 tortured and arrested. I mean, and as you say, that he his son has not apologized for uh, the family's political history. I'm wondering how he was able to do all this. How was uh, uh, Bang Bang, as he's affectionately known, uh, sort of rebrand himself? Bong Bong. Bong Bong. <laughs> Not Bang Bang, Bong Bong. <laughs> I know we have funny nicknames here in the Philippines. Um, a very careful, um, decades long rehabilitation of the Marcos um, reputation. It, this is why I say it's historical revisionism. Um, there are all sorts of stories that have gone around that are patently untrue and provably untrue, and yet many people believe them. Um, there have been complaints about the big tech companies um, and their responsibility in this. Um, and I think there have been complaints on both sides about the role of social media. And I think it's the entire world to consider how he's managed to do this, because it may well mean that this is how you win elections. That's what I'm worried about, the lesson will be for the Philippines, that you can just lie your way into power and that is not democracy as it has been envisioned up until this age of social media mm. and, um, and, you know, this digital revolution. I have to, let me just um, apologize for the sound that you might be hearing in the background. I'm actually in Manila and everyone's on a uh, non-working holiday because it's elections. Um, people have been voting all morning. There've been really long queues. And now I think people are coming out and uh, having lunch or tea or whatever now that they have, uh, uh, shown their vote. They're expecting 80% uh, turnout. So, and, and, and there's been a lot of, um, there's been a lot of stories about various, um, well, about queues going into the, okay. going into the polling stations and then sabotage and of vote buying that's going on rather prolifically around the country. Okay, Veronica Pedrosa, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. Uh, two and a half hours more until uh, the polls close in the elections in, Philipp in the Philippines. Thank you very much.